Welcome back. With the daily barrage of headlines and scandals from this White House, it is easy, I appreciate, to lose track of some important things that are happening. But I wanted to come back to an issue um, that we've talked about here, but it cannot go forgotten. The family separations um, that have happened at the border here. There are still approximately more than 200 children being detained with no idea where their parents are and vice versa, obviously. That despite a court order deadline in July that they were to reunite those children with the families. Disarray in the whole program continuing to stop families from getting back together. Part of the problem, the government has deported many of the parents and now it has no idea to locate them. Also, New reporting suggests those family nightmares may get even worse. The Associated Press and NBC reporting that some separated children whose parents have been deported are now being put up for adoption. Now, while that is going on, the administration is continuing to crack down on both legal and undocumented immigrants. Take the Trump plan to deny green cards for immigrants on public aid or denying entry to the U.S. for any immigrants who they suspect might need assistance in the future. The Trump team has also targeted immigrants who are promised paths to citizenship in exchange for serving in our military. Think about that. They're seeking to cite some for criminal conduct and simply discharge others, which makes them eligible for deportation, even if they've got terrific track records serving our country on the front lines. They're even stripping some Hispanic American-born citizens along the border of their U.S. passports, accusing them of using fraudulent birth certificates, even though they're born in the States. Anyway, let me get back to the separated families. You have children as young as two or three being taken to immigration court, and they're facing a judge alone without an attorney. Time shining a spotlight on charity lawyers who are working for free but they can only help a fraction of the kids who need them. This little girl put a human face in the problem. She's only two. She has what's called that charity lawyer, so at least she's not sitting in a courtroom alone before a judge. Jimmy, I don't, don't care even, don't if they're started. right, left, Republican, Democrat, Purple Party. This is the most idiotic and callous thing I've ever thought of. Imagine, we all have kids. Our kid at age two put in a courtroom without a parent or counsel? Oh, forget that. Forget that. That, that is the lunacy of the result here. This is the most tragic and deplorable example of a lack of compassion, a lack of forethought and afterthought from a policy that this administration instituted. The notion that you're going to separate parents from their kids and allow any of them to be deported without reuniting them, forget about a judge's order, without doing that on your own, and then creating a situation where these children may never see their parents again, it is, I idiotic is the most generous way to describe this. This is so deplorable. It is such a bad example of our government at work. I, it's un fathomable that this, you, you were talking before about suing a limousine company, the yeah. notion that, that the United <laughs> the States point. government cannot be sued by these parents wherever they are. You took my children and I'm never going to see them again. It, it is, it, it, it's just indescribable that and our again, administration this would do this. Sneaky, the idea of putting them up for adoption, and Mayo, to me, Remember when this was brought, and the judge ordered them to do it. And what was the response of the administration? Hey, ACLU, who brought this out, right. you go find him. Yes. I, this is, I mean, it's so wrong. It has nothing to do with politics, so please save it. I, I don't care who you voted for. Right. I don't care what your register, your party is. These are kids, and they didn't have a plan. They, they decide, hey, this sounds good. This will be red meat. But you never had an idea how to reunite them with the families when you then put them in basically jail cells. And then when you're ordered to do it, you pass the buck and now you're talking about putting them for adoption. And I, I, I don't know the words for it, well, but well, there is no culpability. Is my, what's the punishment that they paid, the administration? Well, thus far, nothing, no. but let's look at the irony also. You have people who've been here, that came here at that same age, and they were brought here by their parents, and they've been here for 20 years, 18, 19 years, they're dreamers, and 
we're trying to deport them, but here we have kids who we have forcefully basically separated from their parents, and we're going to now put them up for adoption in the United States, so I suppose they become citizens, or do we later try to deport them as well? I mean, there's not much thought that was given to this. I think Jimmy brings up a perfect point, and it has nothing to do with, with, with any partisan politics as a country, I would think that you want to show at least basic compassion. And if you're in favor of deporting, that's okay. We can d disagree or agree on that. But uh, to separate the family, as opposed to saying, look, you're either going to stay here as a family or you're going to be deported as a family, uh, defies all sense of logic. And Doug, and I recommend people check out the Time story um, that spoke directly to this issue with this child. So they bring her in. First of all, English isn't even her first language, but even if it is, she's two. I thought we're all afforded a, a right to legal representation, you know, and if you can't afford one, one will be appointed for you. Who in their right mind thinks you put a two-year-old kid in a courtroom and it's all going to somehow make sense? Like, this person could possibly, you know, fathom what his or her choices are and, and be able to communicate or, I mean... Well, it's not a criminal proceeding, so you don't have the right to counsel that you would have in a criminal proceeding. But this is like a it's third world country kind it, it, of thing. You know, you, if you look at the justice system in a micro way, it, it's pretty ugly sometimes. And you have a court order saying that what they did was wrong, and now they're trying to go through the system and clean up what's there. It's horrible to see a child treated that way. Everybody will but say I that. But I argue with the premise that they, after the court ordered them to do so, is using the might and the weight of the government to fo forcefully try to locate and reunite families. The only reason we reported that they are now putting the kids up for adoption isn't because they were transparent and said that that was the new policy. They did in the dead of night, and it took NBC here uh, and another news organization to figure it out and make it public. And now they're going to maybe cool their jets to it. So, so my point is, even after being chagrined, even after even members of their own political party going after them, even after a judge orders them to stop the practice and reunite, they're still not complying with a court order. And forget about the letter. There's no evidence that the spirit of this that they're putting their arms around. Rich, I believe they probably can't. I believe they probably would like to do it at this point and not defy a court order, but for some reason they can't do it. When you're talking about adoptions, you're talking about being back in the justice system. You're talking about a judge signing off on adoption. I don't believe it's going to be e that easy to take a child and when you could find their parents and not find their parents. So I think it's to be continued. It's kidnapping. I I'm sorry. It's ridiculous. It's kidnapping. You've kidnapped these children from their parents. Then you've deported the way, their parents. Under duplicitous um, uh, representations. They told the parents in many cases, hey, we're just going to take your kid over here for something, and they never bring the kid back. I, I don't care what they told them. I, the, I, they've kidnapped these children, and now because they don't want to pay to take care of them in the facilities that they've put them in, they're putting them up for adoption so they can integrate them into families that are not their own. Jim, it's bizarre. Imagine it, it if is you go on vacation, you, you overstay your, your visa by a couple of days or you stay an extra week, and technically you're not supposed to. You have your child with you. They separate you and your child. Your child stays in Honduras or wherever you happen to be, and you're sent back to the United States. But they don't do that. Yeah. But it could happen. Jimmy's a Jamaican guy, by the way. So uh, all of a sudden... Yeah, yeah, exactly. We'll go no, to Ocho Rios and we'll find this child that's been uh, abducted for 20 years later. All right, My children coming up wanted next. to stay in Jamaica. <laughs> yeah, exactly, tough life. All right, coming up next. The Mueller probe has been eclipsed by the steady avalanche of other news coming out of D.C., but it doesn't mean the case is closed or the president is in the clear. We're going to take a look at the very latest with a former federal prosecutor.